Hey guys, good day. I wanted to uh, finish with a second video in the, in the two-part series about the, the United States and Biblical End Time Prophecy, and I want to jump to Hosea. I just uh, finished a video a few minutes ago about Hosea, and as I said in that video, I talked about how the United States can clearly be determined as the modern representation of the tribe of Ephraim. And when you look at Ephraim in the Bible, you see it's mentioned 168 times. And the majority and the, the prophet Hosea speaks about Ephraim the most. Now, Hosea was a prophet to the northern kingdom of Israel, okay, which is referred to as Israel. I mentioned this in the previous video. This is Israel, the ten tribes. And this is Judah, the two tribes, actually. Judah was Judah and Benjamin with the capital of Israel. Israel, I'm sorry, the capital of Jerusalem. Israel is the ten northern tribes, with Ephraim being one of them, and Samaria is the capital. So when you read the prophet Hosea, you read it in light of these two nations, Israel and Judah. And these two nations are mentioned extensively throughout this prophecy. Now, I created a an updated um, prophecy, I'm um, sorry, study document for this, I did this study about uh, a few months ago, and I realized something. What I realized was this. The prophet Hosea, when you read the prophet Hosea, it basically says in chapter 3, it says that this book applies to a certain time. So I'm going to read from chapter 3, verse 4. This applies to the children of Israel. Shall, shall dwell many days without a king or prince without a sacrifice or pillar, without an ephod or household goods, after the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, that would be Jesus, and they shall come in fear to the Lord and to his goodness in the latter days. So chapter 3, these two verses determine that this prophecy, this all of this whole book, is for a future time when it was written. None of it makes any sense with a past fulfillment. And I've looked online, I've looked for scholars to see. I said, I did simple Google searches, you know, you know, prophetic fulfillments of the prophet Hosea. You can find none. You can't find any event listed in this, in these chapters, 4 through um, 14, where there's a specific event prophesied that already occurred. None of it. All of it is future fulfillment. And like it says in chapter 3, it's for the latter days, which is now. See, when Israel, when Israel was conquered in 722 B.C., these events didn't occur. At least it's not recorded anywhere. Maybe they did occur, but there's no record of it. I've looked at, you know, white papers, and you, you can find all sorts of things, like prophecies in Jeremiah that were already fulfilled. Isaiah, tons of them, you know, um, the woman will be with child, young woman will be with child, and she'll have a baby, that's Jesus, that was fulfilled when, uh, from Isaiah 7, that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago, but you can't find that with Hosea, none of it, I'm, I'm just astounded when I realize that, so, so what I came to realize when I've been studying this book of Hosea, um, I realized that this book really maps out the events in our near future for the United States, for Ephraim and Judah and the house of Israel, which are the Christians and the house of Judah are the Jews. I can show that in a little bit later. Okay. Um, so look, the last verse of Hosea 14, it's got 14 chapters, says, whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them for the ways of the Lord are right and upright walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. So look, this is ex exhorting people who are, if you want to be wise, study this book and know what's going to happen. Okay, so I put together a key to understand who the people are. This book has Israel mentioned in it. I've always said all along that the USA and the Western nations are Israel. That's the, the modern representation of the Northern Kingdom. Jesus said that he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's a different video. You should search it and you should watch it out. But the lost sheep, the house of Israel are the Christians, guys. People get all tight when you say that. The Jews are the house of Judah. 
it's not that complicated to understand it's how it works guys Ephraim is the USA it's easy to figure that out look at my previous video Great Britain is Manasseh Judah is modern-day Israel when it says Judah in here it means modern-day Israel the Jews the southern kingdom of Judah the Assyrian is who invaded ancient Israel and conquered them and the Assyrian will invade the modern representation of Ephraim and conquer them which is us now we all knew we think that is hundreds of people have had that the king of Israel I honestly think is Trump now this is a little shaky here it's mentioned one time it's killed the king of Israel it says in Hosea is killed when Damascus is destroyed which we know to be World War three so okay what I did was this instead of going through these chapter and verses it's, it's you know it's a hundred some verses it's uh, between chapter 4 and chapter 14 it's a ton of chapters what I did was this I made it easy for you guys I went through here and I pulled out the events and then I listed the chapter after it so what I'm telling you is this the book of Hosea from chapter 4 to 14 represents the timeline of events that's going to occur now every one of them is in there and uh I'm trying to do my best to make that explanation as simple as I can. So what I see here, I got 24 events. Now let me just say this. When when we get to chapter 9, it seems like that's when the chronology stops. It seems like everything is chronological in these chapters from chapter 5 to 9. And when you get to chapter 10 through 14, chapter 10 through 14 seem to be like um, interludes like they're they're kind of going back in time and giving you another summary and giving you more highlights because it's hard to follow the chronology when you get 10 through 14 I struggled with it so you guys can go to the Holy Spirit on that you can see what you guys come up with but look what it says here guys okay chapter 4 we get fish kills chapter 4 there's a lack of biblical knowledge I have to go to chapter 4 guys look what it says here my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge because you have rejected because they have rejected knowledge I reject them for being a priest to me Now, what this means is this he says my people not Satan's people not the dark side my people the Christians and the Jews okay God's own people they have they will be destroyed for their lack of knowledge okay so we do know that in uh, Exodus 19, Revelation 1, God says that he's going to, he chose the Israelites, not the Jews, but the Israelites, all 12 tribes, to be a kingdom of priests. We also learn from Revelation 1, John's talking, the Apostle John's talking to the Christians, and he says, I've chosen you to be a kingdom of priests. So the Jews and the Christians have been chosen by God, not for salvation, but to be chosen to work in the Lord's administration. It's like Jesus is President Trump. He has an administration. That's who the Christians and Jews are going to be. They're going to work for him and they're going to oversee his kingdom. Okay? So that's who my people are when it says this. These are the ones who are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Okay? All right. Let me get back to the summary up here. Okay, before I get too far, you can download this document. When you click on the video, this is not the right video. You can click on any of my videos. And then there's a southern kingdom. You go right here and you click on that and you can see the study document. That's how you do it. So you'll have this document it'll be up there for you to download and look at. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back through the events. Okay. So uh, lack of biblical knowledge. There's going to be a false flag attack made by revolutionaries embedded within the USA. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's chapter five. Benjamin is referred to by name. Benjamin, it says, we will follow you. It's not the tribe of Benjamin. I think it's Benjamin Netanyahu. So here we have Benjamin Netanyahu, in my humble opinion, is called out by name in chapter 5 of Hosea. Now, has someone told Benjamin Netanyahu that? They should, maybe. The land deal, the peace deal about moving the boundary line, Trump's peace deal, chapter 5. The destruction of the USA and mo the modern nation of Israel, chapter 5, right after the land deal signed. The people of the USA, they run to somebody called the Assyrian to cure the wound of destruction. It's chapter 5. The Lord then goes, okay, everything is green. Green is a rapture. Oh, 
to more than one rapture. Can you believe that? Will the Lord do that? Will he rapture people in the waves based on their faithfulness? Well, maybe he would. I say he would. Then there's a rapture, the resurrection of the dead. It's all in here. Who would have thought? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that the last trumpet, the corruptible shall be changed to incorruptible. That would be in, prophesied on a timeline in Hosea. Who would have thought that? Okay, so after uh, the USA runs to the Assyrian, or about the same time, I'm, I can't say exactly when, the Lord will tear away the little ones of the flock. That's the children being taken. That's going to make people go berserk when that goes down. You've heard people talk about that before. And right after the Lord tears away the little ones, the church, the left behind church, seeks after the Lord earnestly. And somehow... They understand that on the third day they will be revived or raptured. Maybe three days of darkness? That's chapter 6. The 144,000, the prophets show up and they cut down the left behind lukewarm churches. It says that the prophets will hewn them, will cut them down. Because after the church children go and the first round of people, uh, the faithful church goes, the left behind are going to be pretty darn mad and they're going to be filling the churches up screaming and yelling at the pastors why didn't somebody tell them about this and then meanwhile the government will be bringing up the alien ETs but the 144,000 show up or the prophets says the prophets I think that's who that is and they set everyone straight and of course there's hatred in the house of God it says when that goes down then out of the blue a terrible thing occurs it says whoredom is found in Ephraim I say that's the abomination that causes desolation. And then right after that, there's a second rapture, a second harvest. And it says of the Jews, just after the abomination, chapter 6. Who would have thought that? No one would ever guess there's going to be a rapture of the Jews. But that's what it says. And then all of a sudden, an evil king is now in charge. I think it's this guy. He takes over, and there's much intrigue and evil deeds done. So let's go. Let's go look at chapter five and chapter six together to see these events. Okay, chapter five starts out. Hear this, O priests. Pay attention, O house of Israel. It's the Christian church, the house of Israel, in my opinion. Okay, it says this. Revolters have gone deep into slaughter. These are the revolters from Second Thessalonians two. Let no. It says that now. When you see gray text. I'm inserting another text from other parts of the Bible so that the Bible can interpret the Bible. That's how you interpret the Bible the best way. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it brings up the man of lawlessness. It says, let no one deceive you in any way for that day, that's the day of the gathering, will come, will not come unless the rebellion, the revolt, comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. So here's the revolter spoken of in Hosea, the Old Testament, chapter 5. Here's 2 Thessalonians 2, the New Testament, that Paul wrote. And then Hosea says, through um, on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, I know Ephraim and Israel. They're not hidden from me. O Ephraim, you have played the whore. And Israel, you have you are defiled. Remember, Israel is the Western nations, guys. Ephraim is the USA. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. Israel and Ephraim stumble, and Judah stumbles along with them. I'm going to jump through here. And on the new moon, they're destroyed. Same thing we see in Amos 8. Destroyed on the new moon. Blow the trumpet in Gabeah, the trumpet in Rama. Sound the alarm. We follow you, O Benjamin. Benjamin Netanyahu, in my opinion. I don't think it's a tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin Netanyahu. Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of punishment. Among the tribes. The princes of Judah, it's modern day Israel, are like those who move a landmark, which is a boundary line, the peace treaty. Upon them I will pour my wrath like water. Immediate destruction when they yell, Peace, peace. First Thessalonians 5, when they're saying there is peace and security, sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. It's all connected together, guys. Right after this goes down, right after they sign this land deal that moves that landmark. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment, determined to go after filth. Then Ephraim went to the Assyrian, to the great king, but he is not able to cure you. And then, chapter verse 14, then I, this is the Lord speaking, will be like a lion to Ephraim, and a young lion to the house of Judah. For whatever reason, 
when he takes from the house of Judah the Jews, he's going to be like a young lion, a little more delicate with those guys because they won't know any of this. But the Christians, they should have known. The Lord's going to be a little more rough with the Christians, I think. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will carry off and no one will rescue. Let's compare this. Let's compare 14, verse 14, with Jeremiah 50, verse 44. The USA is also Babylon. See, the USA is Ephraim, but the USA has been taken over by Babylon. So in essence, the USA is both. Like I said, behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan against the perennial pasture, I, the Lord, will make them run away from her, and I will appoint over whomever I choose. That would be the 144,000. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd, what modern-day pastor can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan the Lord has made against the Babylon. Surely the little ones, that's the children, of the flock will be dragged away, taken and those left behind will be appalled. That's what it says. I didn't even put that in there. And then after these kids are taken by this lion, then Jesus says, I will return to my place, heavenly Mount Zion, until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. And in their distress, they will earnestly seek me. These people are the first left behind group. And it goes right into chapter 6, Hosea 6. And the people there say, come, let us return to the Lord. They immediately know they go and they cry to the, they cry to God in heaven. They cry and they call out his name. For he has torn us. I will tear away. He struck us down, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will rise us up. I think this is the rapture of the true church. That we may stand before him. That's Revelation 7, I think. Look, he will come to us like showers as the spring rains that water the earth. Is this in the springtime of the year when this goes down? Then God says, what will I do with you, O Ephraim, USA? What shall I do with you, O Judah, modern, modern Israel? Your love is like a morning cloud, like dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn you. I have cut you down by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Isaiah 28 talks about this, line upon line, precept upon precept. For I desire steadfast love and not justice, sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. So look, I've, I've gone through... Um, 6, right? Look what happens when we get to the end of verse 6. It says, In the house of Israel, it's a Christian church, I have seen a horrible thing. Abomination. Ephraim's USA's whoredom is there. Israel is defiled. That's what I think it is, guys. The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who exalts himself above every so-called God, an object of worship. And he takes his seat in the temple. Now, the temple could be two things. Paul tells us that we Christians are a temple of the Holy Spirit. But we also have a temple in Israel, the Lincoln Memorial. It's actually a temple. I think he's going to be in there doing this, proclaiming himself to be the Messiah. And it says this, For you also, O Judah, which is modern-day Israel, a harvest is appointed to you when I restore the fortunes of my people. I think it's a second rapture. It's right there. The Jews get raptured too. Or harvest, whatever. In that day, Isaiah 11, 11, I will extend my, I, the Lord speaking, and in that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time, a second time to recover the remnant that remains his people. What does that mean? I get people all the time that says there's one rapture and that's it. Come on, guys. Are you going to take Isaiah 11, 11 and throw it in the trash can? Right here. A second time to recover the remnant that remains his people from all the coastlands of the sea. What else could that be? It's a rapture, guys. Sorry. There's more than one. The Lord is mighty to save and wants none to perish. He's going to come grab his people up in, in waves based upon their faithfulness and when they call out his name. Okay. Starting with Hosea 7, it looks like through intrigue, this new king has become king. And by their evil, the king is glad. And there's a day of the king, I guess, when he gets inaugurated. And the princes, the congressmen, get sick. And their hearts are like an oven. When they, For their hearts like an oven, they approach their intrigue. Then strangers come, the foreigners come, the aid workers. When you know the asteroid hits, they come. And China and all these guys come out here to help us. Then they devour our strength. And Ephraim knows it not. Gray hairs are sprinkled upon his head. Then the USA, Ephraim, silly without sense, 
calling to the world, Egypt, and going up to the Assyrian, Barack Hussein Obama. Then the princes shall fall by the sword. Those who were left behind trying to make it right, they can't do it. I think that's the congressman. They're going to try to fight back and it won't work. Let me go back up to chapter 8 now, guys. Go back up to the summary. Okay, evil king, harvest for the Jews. Uh, many government leaders are killed. Oh, the financial collapse starts in chapter 8. We got three events in chapter 8. The financial collapse, that's when the calf of Samaria is destroyed. Remember that calf that they worshipped? The children of Israel did. Moses was on the mountain. Well, there's a new calf that deals with silver and gold. It's mentioned. It's going to be destroyed. The people have gone up to the Assyrian. He is now their king. God will destroy it. And it says, God will destroy the deep underground military bases with fire. That's chapter 8. Let's jump to chapter 8, guys. It's all there, man. Everything we know is going to happen. Okay, look, here's another trump, here's another rapture coming. Set the trumpet to your lips. One like a vulture, maybe an eagle, is over the house of the Lord. Okay, I have spurned your calf, O Samaria. My anger burns. How long will you be incapable of this innocence? The calf of Samaria, I think it's the bull of Wall Street, shall be broken into pieces. What does this appear? With their silver and gold they made idols for their own destruction. This, there's no more idol in the United States than money. And Wall Street, people always look up their 401ks. I mean, I do it too sometimes. Can't help it though, can we? For they have gone up to the Assyrian, a wild donkey, Ephraim has hired lovers. Then the king and the princess shall ride because of the tribute. See, tribute is the those who were left earlier, the first fruits who were taken. They're writhing, they're in pain. Talks about this in Isaiah 18, about how tribute is brought to the Lord on Mount Zion. Same tribute. And then it says here, For Israel has forgotten his maker and built palaces, and Judah, not only Israel, has multiplied their fortified cities, their deep underground military bases. So I will send fire upon these fortified cities. I think it might be uh, uh, Revelation 6.13. So at this point now is when I think, my thoughts are, is when Obama has taken over, the mark of the beast has been put into full effect. Basically, most of the Christians have gone. The only people who are left, where is it here? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at Hosea 9. Um, you guys, you can read this yourself. I'm, I'm getting on, I'm going too long here. But um, here, the prophet is the watchman of Ephraim, is with my God. This is when I think the rapture of the watchman happened, and they're with God on Mount Zion. And then there's no one left here. It's all the folks who are having to deal with the we're deep into the Great Tribulation at this point. They have deeply corrupted themselves. I think this is deep into the mark of the beast. They're worshiping the mark. Look, there's a, but they have come and they've consecrated themselves to that thing of shame. I think that's the image of the beast that the false prophet makes everybody who have to worship. Thing of shame. They've consecrated themselves. They basically bowed down to it, worshiped it. That's the, that's the image, I think. That's what I'm seeing. And Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. But Ephraim must lead his children out to one who slaughters. This is has to do with Ken Peters' vision, guys. You guys can take this to the Holy Spirit. I'm not 100% sure how this means. But the Lord right now is killing the little babies after. I think these are the children that are born after the mark of the beast. Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. I guess refers back to Matthew 24 and Luke 23. A miscarrying womb and dry breasts. See how that's in verse 14 of Hosea 9? We see the same thing talked about. Pregnant women and nursing mothers. Matthew 24. Blessed are the barren, the wombs that have never born, the breasts that have never nursed. Jesus makes these references. This is the words of Jesus. He's connecting up Hosea 9, verse 14. But my thoughts are this. These children that are being put to death, these are the children that are born to humans after the mark of the beast. So they're really not even his children. It says, Ephraim is stricken. Their root has dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Even though they give birth through mark of the beast babies, I will put their beloved children to death. Just like it happened in the time of Moses and Herod. That's recompense. My God will reject them because they really weren't, they weren't the children of humankind. They were, they're not children of Adam. 
their children of this mark of the beast, this twisted DNA that's going to occur from the mark of the beast. My God will reject them because they have not listened to him. They shall be wanderers among the nations. Okay. They shall, this is where I think they have this, this idol image. The inhabitants of Samaria tremble for the calf of Beth Haven. They shall mourn for it. The thing itself, this image, this beast thing, this thing that they're worshiping, shall be carried to the Assyrian, tribute to the great king. Then Samaria's king shall perish. I think this is when the Lord comes. Okay, guys, um, I'm not going to keep going through this. You guys can take it from here. Um, look here. It, it just keeps going on. Everything is highlighted yellow I have in the, I have in the summary up top. Uh, the Assyrian shall be their king. Um, but let me just end on a good note here, guys. Here it says this. Um, Ephraim has surrounded me with lies, the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah, at this point, Judah still walks with God and is faithful to the Holy One. It's kind of a, the tables have turned here on this one. Um, it gets to the end. Look, they even those who offer human sacrifice kiss idols of calves. I mean, it's, this is bad. Now. We're deep into the Great Tribulation with all this idol worship and craziness going on. So, here we got the, the resurrection. I will ransom from them the power of Sheol. I shall redeem them from death. O oh, death, where are your plagues? O oh, Sheol, where is your sting? Compassion is hidden from mine eyes. This lines up exactly with what is talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. So, you get down here to chapter 14, and basically here's a plea to return to the Lord. They realize that you know, the Assyrian can't save them. And they return, and they dwell beneath the shadow of the Lord. So, and he reminded with this last verse I read from the beginning. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and upright. And the upright walk in them, but the transgressors stumble in them. So guys, you can download this 18-page document. You can go through this yourself. But the kicker here is this. When you read Ver Hosea 3, it clearly points that these end-time events were not fulfilled in the past. None of them were, in my opinion. All of them were future fulfillment. Take this document, study it, take it to the Holy Spirit, and if anything comes up, guys, you know, leave a comment or two about it. I don't have it perfect here, but it's a good start. So, with that, guys, have a good day, and God bless you.